More plot means less pesticide. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with the 40th episode of some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories for the week of November 21st, 2016. Our first story we grab from Sean Cathcart as Denver's trying to become the first U.S. city to legalize social use of marijuana. So a few days ago, from Rothschild's own Reuters, a measure that would make Denver the first city in the U.S. to legalize the use of marijuana in such venues as clubs, bars, and restaurants restaurants is expected to get enough votes to pass, backers and opponents of the initiative said. The announcement comes amid a a string of victories, as we saw on Selection Day for marijuana in California and Massachusetts. The Colorado measure will permit private businesses to allow marijuana use by adults in designated areas with certain exceptions. Backers of the initiative said it would make Denver the first city in the country where cannabis enthusiasts can enjoy the drug socially without fear of arrest. However, it wasn't that simple, and it took even until the 15th for the measure to be counted up. And it was only then last Friday that the options narrowed quickly after state licensing authorities weighed in with a new rule saying bars and restaurants with liquor licenses could not allow pot use on its premises. The Colorado Department of Revenue said it made the decision after talks last summer with the liquor industry, health experts, and groups such as Mothers Against Drunk Driving. So basically, they talk to people who are vehemently opposed to ending the status quo of their liquor industrial complex. So, I don't know, that's a great idea. Chuck your liquor license and just start a pot bar. I don't, you know, what if alcohol could be taxed and pay for all the woes that marijuana is being taxed to pay for. That's something that happened in the recent selection here in Oregon. So there's a lot to go up and down in this story, and as we note, oftentimes on Good News Next Week, it's not unmitigated good news sometimes. Our buddy Chef Jake notes that in recent months, at least one state-certified cannabis lab in Oregon has noticed a huge reduction in the use of pesticides in the samples they receive from dispensaries for testing. Henry Grimmett, president of Portland's Greenhouse Analytical Labs, credits Oregon's increasingly stringent but controversial testing standards for the remarkable pesticide plummet. He said, A year ago, when we first started testing product, we were finding very high rates of pesticides, 70-80%. Now they're finding it 20%. I think the health and safety of the people who use cannabis is extremely important, and I think the role of the lab is crucial in that. I'm quite happy certification is here, because that means dispensaries can't just go to a lab that will pass them. Grimmett is, of course, speaking of the OLCC, the feared Oregon Liquor Control Commission, who's running the marijuana racket here in Oregon. Now, the best part about the law that we passed a couple of years ago here in Oregon is that it does, you know, like... Free, sovereign human beings should be able to do use the plant like you want. You can grow it, you can have it, you can possess it, you can trade it, you can grow industrial. Of course, there are limits to all of that. As we've noted, a lot of this is toothpaste out of the tube awesomeness because they don't call it weed for nothing and they're not going to really be able to stop it. And I was recently doing an interview where I sort of put out the call again for Johnny Hempel seeds just to roam the landscape and put marijuana seeds everywhere. They won't really be able to stop it, and I know people have done that in the past. And again, leave your comments in the fields below as we appreciate you being involved in these shows, being engaged, and I think the ideas that we're able to share here as we show week after week kind of spread like memes, not just stupid things with impact font writing on the internet, but actual mind viruses, which is what a meme really is. Really long, interesting article because it gets into the history and the suppression of marijuana in modern times that, of course, relates to Nixon and Gerald Ford, but also goes back much further. There is research showing that cannabis might actually help reverse Alzheimer's. A 2013 Spanish study using mice that are genetically predisposed to brain plaque accumulation associated with Alzheimer's discovered stimulation of CB2 cannabinoid receptors ameliorates several altered parameters in Alzheimer's disease such as impaired memory and learning, neuroinflammation, oxidative stress damage, and oxidative stress responses. So just another way that everything they told you at your churches and your schools and your banks and your doctor's offices growing up, they're wrong. 
a couple of the other stories that we're watching using hashtag good news next week. Giggling rats help reveal how the brain creates joy. This is from sciencenews.org and from our buddy Eric Moshe. Tickle a rat and it will jump for joy, gleefully squeaking and beg for more. And the audio and video of this is actually hilarious. They have kind of a high-pitched thing that you can you can hear that they amp up. In addition to describing these delightful reactions to a tickling hand, a new study identifies nerve cells in the brain that help turn rats into squirming puddles of giggles. The results, published November 11th in Science, offer insight into how the brain creates glee, an understudied emotion. People really underestimate, or underrate rather, the positive things. Fun, happiness, joy, says study co-author Shinpei Ishiyama of Humboldt University in Berlin. Our buddy Brock West takes us, of course, down under as medical professionals around the world are monitoring the results of a trial by an Australian hospital in the city of Newcastle with great interest. After the introduction of therapy dogs was found to help reduce the recovery times of seriously ill patients by up to 30%. Now, it was back in September that we talked about funeral dogs on an older episode of Good News Next Week. And our last one from Eric Moshe again, a puppy saved from rubble in an Italian quake was actually adopted by the firefighters who saved him, and now he's going to be a rescue dog. I think in some ways that sorts of shows that what we're able to teach and hand off to each other as long as we're doing it with openness and with love and with positive intentions which is what we're trying to do with these episodes here of good news next week and ultimately in a lot of ways through the work that we do as media monarchy we're not looking to destroy everything we want to build connections it's not all about smashing and raging against the machine we stopped looking at that machine and we want to build our own new community human oriented machine now, that's all highfalutin stuff, and I appreciate you being here for some of the solutions-oriented stories and some of the ways that we are winning. If you know of some things going on in your town, something positive that you're involved in, as you're probably maybe even light years ahead of us, share those using hashtag good news next week. And, of course, always need your support. I've been independent, non-commercial, alternative media online since 9-11-05. I think the proof is in our pudding, and hopefully we do walk our talk. We would love your support at mediamonarchy.com slash support. That's where you can find the PayPal links, the Bitcoin address, and also the post office box, and an extra special note to go check out patreon.com slash media monarchy. That is the way to help give us monthly recurring support that we can bank on. And that helps keep us going and growing, my friends. This has been episode 40 of Good News Next Week for the week of November 21st, 2016. As always, I'm James Evan Pilato, thanking you for listening and reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Yeah.